Movie critic Brian Orndorff did not like 300, and he didn't like it because there wasn't enough character development and romance and emotion and all of the things that we were clearly looking for in this movie. What's up you guys, if it's your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and that little bell right next to it. Also, once you're finished watching this video, throw it a like if you liked it and let us know in the comments what you thought of the movie 300. If you love it, hate it, we just wanna hear. Also, what'd you think of this guy's review? Now let's take a look at this stupid review. 300 shoves the realm of digital manipulation and chest thumping brawn past the point of no return. There's no going back. And it kicks you down a well yelling, this is Sparta. Well, just abs. It's a fireworks show in the daytime. Christmas presents on December 26th and porn without the penetration. What are you talking about? None of that makes sense. Is it also like rain on your wedding day? Is it a free ride when you've already paid? Thanks, Alanis Morissette. Isn't it ironic? No. I'm not big on movies needing a point to be appreciated, but this is the first film in a long time where I asked a movie, just what the hell are we accomplishing here? An entertaining story. I'm assuming, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know why movies are made. It's not my job. I don't get paid to be, you know, you. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> don't you think? Watching The Furious 300, I was struck by just how much the film failed to hold my attention. This is a widescreen sandbox for director Zack Snyder, the dreadful 2004 Dawn of the Dead remake, meant to please the comic book fanboys and their distant cousins, the drooling action fanatics. So, he made a comic into a movie and it's supposed to please people who read comics? I mean, is that an insult? That seems like what he was supposed to be doing. It would be weird if he was making a comic book into a movie and he was trying to please like, sushi enthusiasts. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give Snyder this much credit. 300 definitely accomplishes its exceptionally short list of goals. So, so why are we listening to you then? It tried to do something and achieved it? And, and, and it didn't achieve what you wanted? You ever seen an egg wave? That thing that makes it so you can microwave an egg? It has one goal and it achieves it. If you also wanted it to, you know, change the oil of your car, that just makes you a dick. A dick that's not penetrating in a porn while getting Christmas presents at uh, you get it. There was nothing cinematically needy about Miller's explosive 1998 graphic novel. And I don't dare call this picture an adaptation. There's nothing sim- What? It's really hard to put that on screen. Did you not look at it while you were reading it? Did you somehow just read the words? Putting that on screen is crazy. And the fact that anyone was able to do it is crazy. Whether or not you like it, I don't even care. But yeah, it's a little needy. It's hard to do that. Snyder is merely reproducing Miller's vision on the screen, trusting the layers of special effects and sheer noise will act as the connected tissues between the scenes. Why are people mad when people do a good adaptation of a comic book? It's so weird. We have so many bad ones. You're literally saying all he did was take that and put it on screen and that that's bad. All they did was take that book and put it on screen. Like Lord of the Flies. How dare they? It's just slavish and quite tedious fandom. A 120 minute long punch drunk shot for shot tribute. Remember when Gus Van Sant was crucified for doing this to a piece of art that was doing just fine on the page before Snyder decided to merely photocopy it with a $60 million budget. What did you want him to do? You want him to change it? Just call it 30? Have it take place? in Egyptian times? No fighting actually happens? Xerxes is a fucking Muppet? What do you want? What do you want him to do? This is an exceptionally violent film captured almost entirely in slow motion by cinematographer Larry Fong to best marinate all the combat choreography, minutia, and spurting beheadings. It's opulent and indulgent cinematography, and there are some big laughs watching Snyder awkwardly stage sequences to best pose his cast in Miller-esque positions. But the point of all this is not to satisfy dramatic hunger pains, it's to get your rocks off. I, I feel like it's to be respectful to the source material. We, we keep encountering this. I don't understand why people are mad when like, there's a source material, there's beautiful shots and scenes that are gorgeously painted in these comic books and someone actually painstakingly tries to put it in front of your face and then you're mad that they didn't choose a different angle or a different thing. How is that getting your rocks off? I mean, they were nice abs. The Spartan battles make up most of the running time, but truthfully, if you've seen one slow-mo flying through the air spearing, you've seen them all. You know, I say that to myself every day. I also do a lot of meth. 
right, so I tend to forget what I had said. 300 tends to lose its intended wow effect about 30 minutes in, hence its success. Wait, what? All the shimmering golds, disfigured monsters, and half-naked men with their ripped abs, sure to be the most paused DVD in the history of West Hollywood, it's not because it's gonna be Star Wars. Who shot first? Probably the most paused thing. I just had to correct you there. I know, you're, I, I know you weren't being specific and you were trying to make a joke, but it's probably that. Let's move on. Won't change the fact that 300 is a one-trick pony. And thanks to Tyler Bates, White Snake meets Hans Zimmer's score, it's a carelessly, I wanna hear that so bad. You're way off on that, but I actually wanna hear that. That would be fantastic. I don't think you actually know who White Snake is or what they sound like, so. I'm gonna give you a pass, but I wanna see that. <laughs> Want characters and at least some taste of actual conflict? 300 is not the place for that. Snyder makes a sloppy pass at emotional interaction between the king and queen, but he undercuts any progress with a writhing sex scene straight out of Shannon Tweed's once ubiquitous repertoire. You realize the, the like, what they're trying to depict. Like, it's, a, it's kind of an animalistic society. It, it actually made sense to have a writhing sex scene and not a ton of emotion when it's these stoic characters who are going off to war and they probably are gonna die. If it got super Jerry Maguire out of nowhere, it wouldn't have made sense based on the characters that you were looking at. To me, 300 was a rocket-fueled ride to nowhere steered by a captain that has demonstrated to me for a second time that the nuances of character and humanity, no matter how candied they might be, are way outside of his directorial range, which is probably why he chose this as a story to be honest. I mean, if he didn't want to do anything that involved a ton of emotion and a ton of character development, this is the perfect story. And we don't always need emotion and character development in a story. Sometimes we just need conflict, these people versus these people, get some sort of entertainment out of it, and we're good. So I don't know what the hell you want. If it's your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little bell right next to it. Also, hit the like button if you like this video. If you want to see another one from us, you can click one of the ones on the screen. And until we see you guys next time, geek out and game on.